Hi, and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about using Firebase inside Expo. Here's the thing. Inside the documentation, you'll realize that most of the instructions are just for the Firebase database. So that's why in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Firebase storage. If you do want to use the Firebase database, then the link to this documentation is in the description, so you can learn from there. Additionally, this documentation is updated to the latest version of Firebase, which is version 9. And since this was a very recent update, this is one of the only documentations which, with Firebase 9. So that's why finding a solution to Firebase storage mostly results in version 8, which is why this video will address version 9 as well. So go ahead and go into your Firebase project. Go over to the bottom and create a web app. You're going to notice that you get this Firebase config, so just copy over the dictionary. No need to actually copy over the const Firebase config. Go over to your Expo project, and we're going to create a new file. I'm just going to call this Firebase config.txx, and just go ahead and copy and paste, perfect, and then do export default dictionary. Now that you've got this dictionary for your Firebase config, go over back to the app.txx and just import this Firebase config. So, and when you're using Firebase, there's two steps. The first step is to make sure that you're the one using the app and it's not a hacker. So in order to do that, that's why you need this configuration. In order to prove the fact that you're the one uh, using the app, you have the authorization, you have the proof. And then the second part is actually using the Firebase storage. So these will require two separate libraries. So the, all you need to do is expo install Firebase, and this includes both of them. So after you do expo install Firebase, then you're going to import two libraries. You're going to first import initialize app, initialize app from Firebase slash app. And this is how you're going to authorize the fact that you're, that you're a valid user actor of the database. So this is how you validate yourself. And then we're going to import get storage ref and upload bytes from Firebase slash storage, which is how you actually access the storage database. So first, let's address, uh, address the first step, which is validating yourself. All you need to do in this step is do initialize app Firebase config. The reason this is, uh, the Firebase config already has like your API key, storage bucket. It has everything that you're going to want to use. So that's why you only need to initialize the app with this Firebase config. And the reason I put it in a separate file is because if you want to do git ignore on this, then you can just git ignore this file instead of having to git ignore one of your actual screen pages. So this is step one completed perfect. The next step is to actually access the storage database. You can see that I already have some default code in order of using Expo Image Picker. If you want this code, the link to this is in the description. So basically how this works is that this gets the permissions and when you cl uh, click select image, then it'll run this method right over here. So this is the image picker launcher. And if there, uh, the um, image picker it selects an image, which basically means that the user doesn't press cancel when selecting an image, then you have access to an image. So the first thing you want to do to access the Firebase storage is to just create a storage instance. 
So creating the storage instance is basically uh, um, creating an instance of the storage that you can add and access images from. The next step is to create a reference. So you're going to do const ref and ref. And this is like the storage itself where you access, upload, um, all that stuff with the images. But this one is basically create a, creating a image inside the storage. So we're going to all you need to do is pass in two parameters. First, the storage in which you want to add the image to, and then the image name. So let's just say image.jpg. And then the third part is now that we created how you want the image to be accessed in storage, we need to upload it. So I feel like this is a little bit confusing. So let me break it down. This is actually the storage itself. This is how the image will be addressed inside the storage. And then we need to actually upload the image. So in order to do that, we're going to use that third method we imported at the top. So that's going to be upload bytes. You're going to pass in your reference, and then you're going to pass in the result.uri. And this is how you upload images. Now, if you run this, you're going to notice that there is an error. The reason I'm not running this is because this uh, image picker doesn't work the best on an Android emulator. But this doesn't work exactly. And the reason is because we need to talk a little bit about Firebase storage. Firebase storage, you can see probably from the name, is that it stores its images in a form of array of bytes. So a, um, a result of your eye is basically the image encoded into a string. But we want to first convert that into an array of bytes so that we can upload it. So in between the how the image will be addressed and the uploading images, we're going to want to, uh, there's a sub step, which is convert image to array of bytes. So in order to do that, we first need to access the image itself. So I'll just say image is equal to await fetch of result.uri. And then we need to convert it into an array of bytes. I'm going to say bytes is equal to await image.blob. And blob is just basically Firebase storage's way of saying array of bytes. They're the exact same thing. And then inside here, we're going to pass in that byte. So this is all that you need in order to upload images into Firebase storage. I hope this tutorial was helpful and see you in the next video.